Then uh, shortly about uh, chlorination. Uh, as we know, in the Netherlands, we don't use that much chlorination, uh, but in uh, worldwide it is used, and that's mainly because of its disinfection capacity. Yeah? And uh, many uh, lives are saved because of chlorine. So we can say uh, chlorine is not that uh, that important, but uh, it is. Uh, so um, the, chlorina the uh, chlorination uh, attacks. Uh, so it disinfects, that is the advantage, but then also we have residual chlor chlorine concentration in the network and um, uh, that residual also avoids recontamination or when there is recontamination you still have a disinfection capacity. When you don't have chlorine that is not the case. So the moment that you have a pipe network without chlorine and there is con recontamination there is no barrier that people can get uh, sick. Um, so, for example, in our distribution network, when you have growth of bacteria or whatsoever, then uh, you also can disinfect that biofilm, and when there is coming uh, yeah, from the outside recontamination, you, have, uh, you don't have problems. But there are also some, uh, some danger, dangers eh, with chlorine. Uh, first, first of all, it's also the handling, eh, because these are type of bumps eh, that, that, that are stored. So, yeah, you have to do something uh, with it. And uh, it's also yeah, what, we, uh, what we say is that it is a, a, pro a, a problem for health eh, at, the long, uh, at the long run. Uh, another po problem with chlorination is that uh, there was a, a situation in Milwaukee uh, in 1993 and uh, there uh, cryptosporidium occurred and the cryptosporidium was not disinfected by, uh, uh, by chlorine on, because it was resistant against chlorine. So we thought we were at safe water because there were no E. coli in the water but then uh, more than 200,000 people uh, got ill um, but okay, so you have to, uh, to be careful. Yeah. Um, when you dose chlorine, you can do it in different ways. You can dose it as a gas, you can dose it as a uh, powder, and, uh, and you can apply it in different ways, yeah. as a main chlorination, as a post-chlorination, and uh, sometimes they also use it as a transport chlorination or a pre-chlorination. So the transport chlorination is mainly, for example, the moment that you have pretreated water from the river Rhine, for example, and, and you want to send it to the dunes, and during that, that, uh, that uh, transport you don't want to have regrowth in your distribution or in your transport main, you can dose a little bit of chlorine that we call uh, um, transport chlor chlorination. Pre-chlorination you can do when you have, for example, during your coagulation and flocculation system, you have uh, problems with algae growth. And you want to avoid algae growth, then you can put a little bit of chlorine in uh, your water. In the past, it was also used to reduce ammonia, uh, breakpoint point chlorination. Uh, I come to that later. The main disinfection, that's logic. Eh? You dose uh, so much chlorine so that uh, all the bacteria and the viruses and, uh, and the protozoa are removed. And post-chlorination is mainly uh, to, uh, to have a safety chlorination during, disinfection, uh, during distribution. The, when you dose chlorine, in fact, you have two species. Uh, you, ha you have the hypochlorous acid and you have the hypochloride. And um, uh, this one is the hypochlorite, sorry. So the lower the pH, the more hypochlorous acid you have, and uh, the higher the pH, the more uh, hypochlorite you have. The hypochlorous acid is more effective for disinfection than the hypochlorite. So uh, normally chlorination we apply at lower pHs, not that high pH. And then depending on the, 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 the dose that you, uh, that you give, you can calculate uh, what is the removal of bacteria uh, in your system. And then you can integrate it uh, and then you can calculate what is the, 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 the residence time that you need. And so if you make an integration, you come to the conclusion that you have 
when it is a plug flow, then you have this system. So when you have a certain rate of removal and you have a certain time, uh, residence time, you can see what is the removal of your bacteria. Yeah? So, and, and this rate is depending on the concentration. So the more uh, concentration we have, the more time we have, the better the disinfection is. Yeah? Um, that is for the disinfection. Chlorine, you can also use, uh, also reacts with organic matter. It oxidizes organic matter. And uh, the advantage is that the color is reduced. So the effect of chlorination is sometimes when you have high chlor uh, color, then the color is a little bit reduced. But the problem is also that it reacts with humic acids and then it forms trihalomethanes. Uh, and uh, these are bad for uh, your health and the same with uh, haloacetic acids. So in fact, when you have high concentrations of organic matter and you have high dosages, then you can have this formation. Now, and, and that's the difference between the Netherlands and other parts of the world. Eh? What they do in the Netherlands, we say, okay, then we avoid chlorination as much as possible. And, or in other parts of the world, they say, no, then what we can do is, for example, we can remove the humic acids. We can remove the organic material before chlorination. So then we have less uh, compounds where chlor chlorine can react with. And then the concentration of uh, trihalomethanes and uh, haloacetic acids are going to reduce as well. So that is the approach. Yeah? And of course, then maybe you can try to dose as, uh, uh, as less as possible. Now another uh, thing is that uh, uh, chlorine can react with inorganic material. One is, uh, for example, with, uh, with ammonia, and, uh, and then you have uh, monochloramine, Sometimes uh, we call it uh, chloramination, and uh, that is something that, uh, that is applied uh, in several parts of the, of the world as well, because it's less reactive, but it's more stable. So you can dose less, and then during a longer period, you can have the safety chlorination. But you can also use it to remove ammonia. Uh, and this is in this, uh, here, here you can see it. Uh, for example, the moment that you uh, uh, dose chlorine, the concentration, uh, the, the residual concentration goes up, but then at a certain uh, concentration related to the ammonia, it goes down, and then it goes up again. So what's happening here? The chlorine is reacting with the ammonia, and then the ammonia is uh, transformed into uh, nitrogen and removed. But, you, but in fact what you see, the concentrations of chlorine are very high. Eh? When you want to remove one milligram per liter ammonia, you have to uh, add 7.6 milligram per liter chlorine, and that is very high. Normally concentrations of two or uh, one or two are, are normal concentrations. Yeah? So nowadays we don't do that anymore because on the one hand we have less ammonia in our service waters because we treat our wastewaters, and on the other hand the moment that we have chlorine or ammonia in our uh, waters we can uh, remove it with filtration yeah? because then we have the normal ammonia uh, conversion to nitrate as in, in the groundwater treatment. Yeah? Now, when you want to avoid this disinfection byproducts, you can uh, remove the organic material. And that we can do by coagulation, we talked about it, when we have low pH, high concentrations of iron uh, chloride, for example, we can remove the organic material. Uh, we can, for example, use uh, activated carbon to remove natural organic matter that absorbs on the carbon. Or we can use ion exchange resins where we can also remove humic acids 
with, uh, with exchange with uh, chlorides. That's, uh, and, of course, we can uh, think of alternative uh, uh, products than chlorine, in this case, for example, uh, chlorine dioxide, that's sometimes applied. Uh, so it's a little bit uh, uh, more stable, uh, it has a good disinfection capacity, but then, yeah, you have also other problems. Uh, then you form chloride in chlorate. So in the Netherlands what we do is we don't use chlorine anymore, but we go through this alternative disinfection. Uh, ozone, we talked about it already, UV, uh, uh, membranes, and our slow sand filters. And the slow sand filters have a high disinfection capacity, so then we don't uh, have this uh, chlorine uh, need anymore. And the other thing is that in our distribution network we avoid leakage, we uh, always have sufficient pressure in our distribution network and we avoid regrowth by taking out the nutrients. So, uh, and that uh, the slow sand filters have a very good role in that, that as well. Because in the slow sand filters, uh, all the organic material, degradable organic material is degraded. Uh, the phosphates are degraded. Ammonia is degraded if, if there's still uh, something in. So then we don't have nutrients in our water. So then we have less potential for regrowth. So then there's a less need for chlorine. Uh, the leakage, of course, when you have too much leakage, then you have also possibilities that when the, when the water is, uh, the distribution network is uh, without pressure, then other water can come in. So when you have always sufficient pressure and little leakage, then there is no um, uh, problem of uh, uh, ingress of, of contaminated water. In the Netherlands, the leakage percentage is about 2 or 3 percent. Uh, and that's very low compared to other parts. So the only part in the Netherlands where we use chlorine is in our swimming pool. Eh? And even there we are now doing research on uh, how we can diminish the amount of chlorine in our swimming pools because there is also chloroform, etc. In the, in the water and can be also a little bit bad for health. But okay, the advantage of a swimming pool is that you are not drinking it and you are not the whole day in the swimming pool. Eh? Okay, this is what I wanted to tell you about chlorination. It's not very extensive, but at least uh, you have a global overview of what chlorination is about.